I've had so many people uh, tell me that, oh, I was very intimidated to come to Atlas, you know, because I thought I had to wear a three-piece suit, you know, my girlfriend has to wear heels. But, you know, like, they come here and they, like, they feel almost relaxed. It's a space that they can be truly who they are without, like, pretending to be, like, some high society person. So that's really good. That's something that I want my guests to feel every time they come to Atlas. Hi, my name is Yana. I am from Singapore and I am the head bartender of Atlas Bar. Because of how the space looks like, you almost feel like it's going to be a very serious kind of feeling that we're super kind of like proper. But our bar team, we're so young, we just want to have fun. And when you come to the bar, you wanna, you kind of like expect us to be super proper, but we're actually kind of like a little bit rowdy at the bar. Like uh, we have a lot of fun with each other. Uh, we try to make as much uh, movement and noise when we are making drinks so that people in the room kind of like feel, they don't feel intimidated by the space because we make it feel more welcoming for the guests. And uh, I encourage that with my team, especially I'm like, People want to come and people want to see our personalities. They don't want to see robots behind the bar. So show your personality. Let it shine. Let's go crazy. Let's make everyone come here and have a fun experience. And I don't want them to feel like they are in like a hospital, you know, like where everything's so serious, so clean, so pristine. Although when people come here, they are mesmerized, blown away by the space. But we try to let our personality shine so that people don't feel too intimidated by that space and they, are, they feel very comfortable and they can relax and have a drink here and just chill. <laughs> it's something that the bar scene in Singapore does very well. Uh, all of us here have very different concept bars. You know, we have a dive bar, we have like a speakeasy style bar, we have places like Atlas where it looks super grand and proper but Everywhere you go, you have the same experience. You feel welcome, you feel comfortable. So for Atlas, we tend to make cocktails that are inspired by the European Art Deco era. So we stick to a lot of classics um, when we are creating our cocktails. We also use European ingredients here, which is something that is different like you come to Singapore and you expect us to use a lot of uh, local ingredients, right? But you don't really find it here in Atlas because we try to bring the essence of the European art deco and the classics here in Atlas. So when we are creating new cocktails here or for the new menu that I've launched, like all of our cocktails are inspired by the classics and we do a spin of it. And we try to stick to the original classic as much as we can. Sure, Vishu, can you pan up and show the gin tower a little bit? Yeah, so what you're seeing is the gin tower and right now, as of the last inventory day, we have about 1,375 gins in the collection. Every day, we use them every day, every day people order from the collection menu Every day we will have to climb the tower and get a gin, uh, so it's operational. People don't know, people think that that's like a decorative piece, but there's an extension of our back bar. So inventory day is very fun for us in Atlas. <laughs> Yes, so the Occidental is a drink that is in our uh, new menu that I just launched uh, a few months ago. It is the first menu that I worked on by myself since I took over as head bartender. And the Occidental is kind of like a drink that I wanted to make to reflect what a martini is supposed to be. I'm a huge martini drinker. I think it's a classic. There's really no need to change that recipe, but I wanted to give it a new spin, give it a new life. So the Occidental was actually inspired by me 
kind of like going into my stock room and seeing a bottle of limoncello that has been sitting there for a while and I got very obs- I got very obsessed by the limoncello I was like I need to give it some life it's been there I need to put it in a cocktail and I want to make it right so, so this drink is an absolute classic it has Bombay gin in it. It has Cocchi Americano, Mancino Bianco, and also just a splash of limoncello to bring out that citrus notes that you want to get from a martini. And I 100% believe like with a martini, the spirit has to come through. Uh, it's a drink that you want to have a sip of and you want to feel the gin in that drink. And this drink totally captures that the essence of that. And for this new menu, we've also try to be a little bit more transparent with our guests. So we are, we've actually calculated all the ABVs for our cocktails. Uh, so this drink actually sits at 39.2% ABV, which is something that I recommend to everyone. And people love it. Like The ABV may seem intimidating, but when you drink it, it's so easy, it's clean, goes down very smoothly and it's been one of the best selling drinks here so i'm really proud of this creation this is my favorite child right here like i shouldn't have favorites but this is definitely my favorite definitely so i will start with a few dashes of orange bitters um i have a black lemon bitters here as well so I'm going to add the limoncello in here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just a splash, so only five mils of it. Because the limoncello, when you use it, it can actually bring out a lot of bitter and sour flavors. And I didn't really want that in the martini. So I put very little of it. And then we have Mancino Bianco here. Mancino Bianco Ambrato is kind of like a in between a dry and a sweet vermouth. So it's, it makes your martini slightly wet and not too dry. And Cocchi Americano, just to bring out more of the herbaceous flavor. And of course, one of my favorite gins to use in a martini the Bombay Sapphire, and we have 60 mils of that in this drink. I think one thing that's great is that when you drink a martini made with Bombay, you taste a lot of the gin in it. Like, no matter how much vermouth you put in it, the, the gin just stands out in the drink. And that is very important in a martini that the spirit stands out and it doesn't get outshined by everything else. So in, in theory, a martini should be one of the easiest drink to make because it's only three ingredients. It's bitters, a bit of vermouth and gin. But I honestly believe it's the hardest drink to execute because you need to get dilution right and the temperature has to be right. When you make a martini, you want it to be almost frozen. You want it to be super cold. Uh, and there's something quite hard to achieve in tropical weather like Singapore. The moment I bring out a frozen glass, it's immediately warm. So that's something that we have been trained for here. I cannot boast that I have a large collection of uh, gin and I cannot make a correct martini. So... <laughs> So when I make my martinis, I try to experiment a bit with the moves uh, or with uh, the aperitifs that I use in uh, the martinis. So I found that using the Koki Americano does um, bring a little bit of depth into the martinis. Uh, it doesn't change too much of the drink, but it adds a little bit of depth. So when you drink it, there's a lot of layers. When you drink it, you taste the gin, you taste the vermouth. And every sip is kind of like a different experience. And as the, like when you drink it chilled, it's almost like a different experience. When it slowly uh, warms up, I would say, it is also a very different kind of experience. And that is something that I want to take my guests on a journey with, that the drink changes. It's a drink that 
is constantly changing as you take sips of it. So that's something that I try to achieve with this. Okay, so a super frozen glass. Pour it out. A little bit of lemon zest. Oh, 100%. A lemon is the best way to garnish your martini with. Only when I'm feeling a little bit adventurous, I will garnish with olive or an onion, but I always go for the classic. It never goes wrong, yeah. And there you go. Just a little bit of thyme in the drink to bring out a lot of the herbaceous flavor and for the nose. And cheers. Do you mind if I take a sip of it? Um, I'll say don't overthink it. Just trust the process and don't overthink it. And I think one of the big tips I've given to a lot of my guests when making martinis is that if you're hosting friends or you want to make one for yourself at home is to always keep a chilled bottle of gin in your fridge. So when you start with a frozen bottle of gin, you would definitely always have a perfectly chilled martini in your glass.